Welcome to the Spirit-Led Men at Work podcast, where I interview Christian men from all walks of life with varying job titles who have one thing in common. They are all choosing daily to be led by the Holy Spirit at their work. And because of that, they are leading, prospering, glorifying God, and experiencing joy and purpose in their work. And you can too. Welcome, Minute Work, to episode 12 of the Spirit Led Minute Work podcast. Today I'm going to be interviewing PJ Simmons. PJ is the founder and director of Gospel Driven Entrepreneur and the host of the Gospel Driven Entrepreneur podcast. His heart is to equip entrepreneurs in connecting their faith to their work intentionally, engaging culture to bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth. PJ lives in Atlanta, Georgia, with his wife, Ashley. And before we get started with the interview, I just want to say a personal thanks to PJ. He was uh, very helpful both in uh, doing this interview, but also answering some of my questions I had uh, getting started in podcasting. So I really appreciate that. So let's get right to the interview. PJ, thanks so much for joining us. I just want to jump right into this and ask you my first question, which is, when did you first become a Christian? Yeah, man. I uh, well, first off, thanks for for having me on. But I actually became a believer uh, at, at a very young age. I was eight years old at a children's camp uh, out in West Tennessee, and uh, uh, did the whole you know Southern Baptist thing. <laughs> Walked down the aisle, uh, gave my heart to the Lord, and uh, ever since this then, man, I, I've been really blessed not to you know kind of pursue a life of you know, trickling into sin and testing the waters and that kind of stuff have really been, God has kept me and stayed committed uh, to him since then. And it's been an awesome journey so far. (laughs) That's great. And and it it is highly overrated that trickling into, uh, or the prodigal son approach. uh, (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, very thankful for that. Yeah. good (laughs) Good for you. All right. Well, my next question is, tell us how you got started with your podcast, The Gospel Driven Entrepreneur, which is you know, how, how I was introduced to you. Yeah, absolutely. So it, interestingly enough, man, how this idea came about for me is probably maybe two and a half years ago, I was going through the Financial Peace University class, uh, you know, through Dave Ramsey and his team out of Nashville. Wow. And uh, was Love wavering it. through this thing of of okay, do to pay off <laughs> predominantly the student loans that I had. I went uh, to uh, to Bible college and, and studied and got a Bible degree there, and um, trying to figure out okay, how do I how do I pay back student loans from <laughs> university that I borrowed, you know, money from the government? <laughs> so do I get an extra job? Uh, and so so I kind of you know, put all kind of stuff together. I started driving for Uber and started testing these waters and <laughs> found out real quick, like, man, this is miserable. Like, not, I don't enjoy any of this, and which is totally okay, you know, for, you know, people to do jobs they don't necessarily enjoy. But um, I wanted a thing that, you know, I, I could begin to try to make money at um, that I could put my skill sets into play and that could also provide, you know, prop possibly a future platform uh, for me in the future that can maybe grow into something like a full-time job that I really enjoyed and uh, continued to pursue. And so that's how the idea came about. Um, over the years, I had uh, been involved, I've been uh, leading a nonprofit called Medici Project. We work with students uh, around the country doing service learning trips, urban mission programs in Atlanta and New York City. Uh, we also host, have hosted conferences and do that kind of thing. So I have a lot of experience with like interviewing and networking and kind of organizational development and that kind of stuff. So I was just think, thinking, you know, what's the cheapest, most sensible business idea that I could come up with uh, that could kind of put all these skills that I've gathered over the last couple of years uh, into play? And I landed on podcasting. <laughs> so, um, so I checked out, uh, started listening to a lot of guys, uh, a lot of girls, individuals kind of in this space, in this world. 
and got introduced to an individual named John Lee Dumas, an entrepreneur on fire, uh, and started following him, what he was doing. And I was like, man, this, this looks like he's having uh, a ton of fun uh, and he's making some money. So uh, I'll, I'll try it. So I jumped into it <laughs> um, in September of 2014. And so i uh, been doing it ever since then. Uh, we release about two episodes a week. They're all interview-based with uh, entrepreneurs and leaders from around the world. Um, been doing that about 140, I don't know, 43 episodes deep now. And so it's been, it's been a good journey, man. It's been a ton of fun. That's great. So would you say that you, in your role in the nonprofit that would, would you also consider that entrepreneurial or would you, would you think of that more as, as an employee? Yeah, I think it was very much entrepreneurial and that, and that really came from, you know, our, our leader, our boss founder that had founded the organization. Uh, he always kind of led with this mantra that, uh, you know, in the nonprofit world, or at least for us, you, you almost had to pay pay for yourself. And so if you weren't, mm. you know, creating opportunities or fundraising or creating revenue streams uh, that didn't pay, uh, didn't bring money into the organization, uh, then you didn't have a job. <laughs> so, uh, so that, you know, helped. And, you know, one of our, we were a little different than kind of more your, some traditional uh, nonprofits. We kind of ran our organization uh, almost with a as a for profit model, uh, these uh, events, uh, trips, alternative break opportunities, these type of things that students would join us on were actually all paid uh, services by schools, mm. universities, students, uh, churches, and that like. And so uh, we had to get out there, man. We had to we had to market it. We had to sell it. Uh, we had to convince them to trust us and give us you know, their money. And, uh, that's what, that's what paid the bills. That's interesting. So I, you could, you might say that that experience maybe gave you a little bit of an insight into entrepreneurship. Would, would that be accurate? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And I think what's really cool too, is just, you know, being in the nonprofit world, especially small nonprofits, uh, you tend to wear, uh, seems like 50 different hats, <laughs> uh, because I mean, you become the marketing director, you become, uh, you know, one of the top persons to look at the budget, <laughs> you become the, right. the graphic designer, you, you become ba- basically a jack of all trades, which is, which is good and bad. Um, right. but with those, with those experience, I, I really gained a lot of tools, uh, to kind of help me, um, more than anything, I think move forward with confidence in 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 my skill set so that I could uh, really pull something like this off. Now you're a young man, I know that. Yeah. Do you mind sharing? Yeah, sharing absolutely. How old you are? So I'm 29. <laughs> 20. Okay, yeah, so 29. that's that's really impressive what you've done. So if I understand this right, PJ, there's a period of time. Uh, after you got out of uh, Bible college, where you uh, were working for this nonprofit, and then then you launched into this podcast, kind of on the side, is that the right way to describe it? Yeah, yeah. So I was doing full time uh, full time work with the, yep. the nonprofit organization, and then started doing this uh, on the side. And what was that like trying to trying to juggle that? I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurs deal with that situation and how how was that for you was that did you enjoy that was it highly stressful some, something that you didn't want to maintain long term or what kind of what was your thought process through that yeah a, a great question man I, I knew that you know it's it's definitely not something that i would have, have wanted to do long term with, with that in mind you know i didn't know how long it would take uh because <laughs> I, I mean actually this is my first kind of real entrepreneurial venture opportunity to do. But I did know one thing I was, you know, sitting, I guess I was 27 when I started, uh, still single, you know, n- not married, didn't have kids, didn't, didn't have anything like that. Um, and, and I thought, you know, uh, how, how am I going to leverage this time that probably I will never have, 
uh, for the rest of my life. You know, Lord, mm. Lord willing, if he blessed me with a wife and kids and, and those type of things. Um, but how can I leverage this time as a, as a resource to, to advance the gospel and to really grow something, uh, to, to glorify, to glorify God? And so, uh, I do kind of in that head, head first. Uh, there were quite a few nights that I would have carved out. Um, initially, you know, kind of when you ever start something, you're, you're all about it. And so, uh, you're, you're definitely going to spend more time on it, you know, when you first start, than kind of once you get a year and a half down, down the road <laughs> type thing, then, then you start feeling, Oh, when, when does, when do I catch a break type, type thing? Uh, but I had a couple nights that I would carve out, um, uh, maybe, I don't know, three or four, three or four hours, you know, each night, uh, doing some stuff. And then, uh, typically, uh, about four or five hours on the weekend, like on a Saturday or a Sunday, I'd work, uh, that kind of stuff. Just more so, uh, just kind of maintaining the thing, man. You know, a uh, lot of, uh, as you're finding this out with, with podcasts, a uh, lot of scheduling interviews, a lot of, you know, doing the actual interview, a lot of editing, then uploading it, then you got to promote it and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, very time consuming with just the logistics of like getting a product out there, you know, not necessarily selling anything, uh, but just getting something out there for, you know, to grow an audience. Yep. Yeah, I think I heard it said once um, on a podcast that that uh, writing a blog was was uh was easy but putting out a podcast takes a lot more time and my first thought was you know because i had been blogging for a while you know it takes me a, quite a bit of time to put out a blog yeah, post. Exactly. How, how much <laughs> how much more time could that take to put out a podcast right exactly man it's it's a beast dude it is a beast yeah. yep all right so do you think you always wanted to be an entrepreneur like from an early age or i didn't no not at all which which is a totally you know, this kind of came as a surprise to me and was really kind of giving me uh, a lot of faith in th- this has to be uh, more so of a God thing. Because my whole life, I was leading towards uh, wanting to be in pastoral ministry. Uh, I was mm-hmm. wanting to be into the local church. You know, hence the reason I went to Bible college and studied discipleship ministry. And I, I was wanting to do that. Um, sure. But uh, over the years, you know, as my skills developed and I experienced some different things, uh, my passions kind of took a different route. And so uh, business entrepreneurship was never, ever, ever on my uh, radar up until about uh, two years ago. And I just fell in love uh, with the concept or the idea of you know, doing my own thing and uh, gained a lot of confidence over the last five years of, of being able to do that. And so, so it's been cool. It's been cool. So, um, so that, so yeah, like I jumped, I jumped right into it, jumped in right into the entrepreneurial world, you know, typically uh, working, you know, your, your full time and then, then doing this thing on the side, but man, it was, it was never on my radar. And so, uh, uh, not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm going to go ahead and vote and believe uh, that that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm in agreement with yeah. that. Okay, now you recently made a transition, uh, a, a pretty big step. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us about that and kind of how that um, developed? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so actually this whole, my goodness, two th- first first quarter of 2016 has been nothing but transitions, it seems like, <laughs> for me, but all good and positive. So uh, what you're probably referring to is uh, I have actually gone uh, part-time uh, with what I've been doing full-time over the last five years with a nonprofit uh, so I can dedicate more hours uh, as a part-time venture uh, to gospel driven entrepreneur and, and to, uh, to attempt to grow that, uh, and sustain that and build that out, uh, that I may influence and serve, uh, other entrepreneurs and business leaders, uh, from around the world. And then, you know, kind of in conjunction with that was, uh, actually last weekend, not this weekend that just passed, but last weekend, uh, April, oh, shouldn't forget that one, right? April 9th. Uh, I actually got married 
uh, on April 9th. And so making that transition with, uh, with a new bride and, uh, and so that congratulations, yeah, by the thanks, way. man. I appreciate that. And so that's even transitioned my, you know, focus and my time of, you know, gone are the days where I can spend as many nights as I want to working, you know, three, four hours and working on the weekends and trying to grow this thing. You know, I have to, uh, stay focused and get my stuff in during the times that that are allotted for work to uh you know to to make sure that the main thing stays the main thing which is you know being in a, a relationship with Jesus being in biblical community and uh making sure that I'm there uh putting my wife first so a uh, lot of transitions going on man yeah those the it's it's uh, very easy to get busy with uh, anything and, and lose sight of those higher yeah, higher priorities. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yep. What do you like most about being an entrepreneur? You know, I, I think, and I, I would guess that this answering this question for me is probably what most entrepreneurs how they would answer this question, but simultaneously uh, would make no sense to those who may not be entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that is I think what most excites me about being an entrepreneur is uh, the unknown, uh, the the necessity to rise to a challenge and rise to an occasion uh, to that if uh, it doesn't happen, uh, then this thing that you've been building – over the last, you know, however many years, uh, is, is done, you know, um, I'll have to, you know, go out and, you know, find another job to, you know, provide for my family and those type of things. But, but I absolutely love, uh, the challenge and, and being, and being pushed. I think for many times, for most people, I really don't think we realize, you know, what we're actually capable of until we're put in a position that we actually have to do it. Um, you know, I think that comes with with business, with family, with relationships, with just anything in life uh, in general. And so I love the challenge of the unknown and, you know, kind of uh, getting on the cusp of that. Uh, are, are we going to make it? Are we get, <laughs> Are we going to be able to make it happen? And then, you know. Uh, kind of like you know the runner finishing a Boston Marathon, which is this week at the at the finish line. Like you know, can't believe that they finished, but they just you know kept talking to themselves, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And uh, I don't know, man, I, that that kind of uh, that's just exciting to me. Uh, I, I love kind of that challenge. Yeah, well, and I'm sure some of that is probably personality based. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for, for a lot of people, the unknown is something they want to avoid at all costs. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. Predictability, and so that's something that you, is you actually view as a positive. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. So, what do you like least about being an entrepreneur? Least about entrepreneur is uh, not having full confidence of how much money I got coming in. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, you know, it, I've been very blessed over the last, uh, you know, five years or whatever to have the, you know, that steady paycheck. I know exactly what's being deposited into my bank account every mm -hmm. single Friday, you know, whether, uh, uh you know, I'm, I'm sick <laughs> all week or not, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, right. but you know, with this transition definitely uh, worked it to where, you know, we're living within our means and those type of things. Uh, but, you know, like I said, you know, the whole initial vision for wanting to start this thing was, you know, I want I want to get out of debt, man. I want to steward my resources well. I want to pay off those student loans and pay off a car note and, you know, be financially free and uh, be a giver. Uh, and so when you don't have a certain amount of money coming in, sometimes it's like, whew, is it going to happen? <laughs> and so, um, so that's probably the least, um, uh, least exciting part, uh, of, of entrepreneurship thus far. Right. Well, and I, I guess in that sense, it's a two-edged sword. Yeah, you know? it is. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and I when you when you talked about making that that jump, I've uh, facilitated the FPU. Uh, my wife and I have several nice. times, and I, I also uh, so many times I hear frustration from folks who have income that's not salaried in, income that's uh, you know, whether it's sales or or something that's entrepreneurial in there. And they they express frustration with trying to make the program work, and I could relate to that because that's where I was when I started that. So it is definitely uh, you know two sides of the coin. It's just the nature nature of the beast, I guess. Absolutely, man. We're you know we're yeah. all we're all dealt a different hand. You know you just you gotta you gotta figure it out. You know for for yeah. those things. That that's something you know that you know that that we me and my wife has specifically done. You know as it pertains to financial peace. You know, we build our budget uh, solely on what she makes and what my part-time mm-hmm. salary is. Uh, oh, everything yeah. extra that comes in uh, is being thrown uh, to that. And so it's not like, hey, you have to make a certain amount of money this month in order to pay our bills right. uh, just because that's that's not the way we're going to live. Uh, that sounds like a great lives. plan. And, yeah, man. Yeah. So that, that's, how, <laughs> that's how we do it. <laughs> so. That's great. That's great. PJ, we've talked a little bit about entrepreneurship. Some of our listeners are entrepreneurs and, and some of them are not. Um, but I think one thing that all of our listeners probably share is that they want to make a difference with their work. They want to influence our culture for Christ. What advice would you give uh, those of us listening, regardless of what their occupation is, on, on how they can most effectively do that where they're at? Yeah, absolutely. That's such a great question, man. And that's that's exactly what we're all about at Gospel Driven Entrepreneur, uh, influencing culture with the gospel, specifically through our vocations. Uh, you know, the average person spends about 80,000 hours of their lifetime at work. Uh, you know, the majority of their waking hours, at least the majority of their uh, highly functioning waking hours. So my hope would be that Jesus would have something redemptive planned for those hours that we're at our, you know, highest functioning capacity, at least especially here in the West within Western culture. Uh, I think for everyone who who is in vocation, I, I think this idea of work and why work matters is simply because we're made in the image of God. You look at the creation story, right? Uh, God created the heavens and the earth, uh, created um, the, the plants, the animals, the fish of the sea, uh, created for six straight days, called it good, uh, and on the seventh day, he rested. And so he's a creator. He's a doer. He spends time working. Most people see work as uh, kind of a, a, a burden, but it's more of an image uh, representation of who God is and being made in his image. Also, what we also notice in the, in the uh, creation story, in the creation narrative, is that God um, created in community, right? He did it by his spirit. He did it through his son. You jumped over uh, into the book of John where um, John writes about how um, – uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Uh, things were made through Him. Uh, Paul talks about it in Colossians that everything was made through Him and for Him, through Christ and for Christ, everything that's been created. Uh, and so God creates in community. And so if we as image bearers of God are, are reflecting God's character uh, through our work by doing great work, uh, doing our best, calling it good, uh, doing so in community with, with other people. I think that's another very important aspect of being image bearers and influencing culture of just simply working with other people, both believers and unbelievers. We have an opportunity to influence, to uh, represent God's character, even the things that we create in, in work, whether you're an entrepreneur or just an employee uh, of a business, you know, you have a certain set of tasks that you're you're doing. Uh, typically, uh, it, well, definitely, if you're an employee, you know, you're interacting with somebody in some capacity. And so you have an opportunity to engage in community. Uh, how do we view our work through this idea of, of, of God's mission and vision of establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth? 
uh, through the things that we create, through the things that we do, through the things we toil at, uh, through the things that we try to make beautiful out of chaos and brokenness, whether that's, you know, some random product we're trying to sell or some Joe Schmo coworker who we just can't simply stand, uh, but we choose to be graceful towards them and, and show them love and show them Christ. And, and so rather than a specific, like, this is how you do it, you know, A, B, C, D, I think we have to come back to a proper theology uh, of what it means to just simply be image bearers of God. And, and what are the implications of that on our work? We do our work well. We serve people. Uh, we 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 work without um, complaining. We look to be graceful. When we're wronged, uh, we show grace because Christ showed grace uh, to us. So I think it's much more holistic on uh, kind of our foundation of theology, more than it is just the hey, here's the top three ways that uh, you can make sure that you're influencing your culture. Uh, through your work. Does that make sense at all? It no, it does. And and what it says to me is 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 casting a uh, a bigger vision maybe than what we're used to casting yeah. and 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 putting putting our work in a whole different context maybe Absolutely. than what we're used to. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean we, we do especially as westerners man, we 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 set aside those 8, 10, 12 hours of day uh in the middle of the day uh, for the, that's when we go to work. We go to work to to make money. Uh, we we go to clock in, clock out. Um, uh, but I, I really think we have to reframe uh, our mindset and our picture of of just how how is God specifically wanting to use me at work? And I think He tells us that uh, in Scripture. He tells us His plan for uh, his mission of establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth. It's rooted in service. It's rooted in being life-giving to people, in in creating cultural goods for the flourishing uh, of what God created in the beginning, you know? And so I, I think it's very much more holistic in nature, and, and the implications and the opportunity that we have— uh, are far more reaching and can be much bigger if we truly understand uh, a correct biblical worldview on how our work can influence our communities and culture. I totally agree. You mentioned uh, about so- showing grace. I'm going to ask you a few questions that I ask uh, all of all the folks I interview um, that kind of deal with real practical issues at work. Jesus told us to love our enemies. Tell us about the most difficult, maybe even unlovable person you've dealt with in the workplace and how you were able to show love and grace to that person and how your faith played a part in the situation. Hmm. Good question. Good question. Uh, in the workforce, I think some of the biggest things uh, that we've dealt specifically, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go back to our, you know, what I've been doing over the last five years, as far as my full-time vocation. Uh, we work with um, a lot of college students uh, around the country. And we're talking, you know, big state universities from Ohio state, Rutgers university, university of Michigan, all the way to small liberal arts colleges that no one's ever heard of in their life. Uh, And what we found is that uh, college students, uh, and this, you know, this, this isn't a knock, hopefully, hopefully I'm not trying to do that. Um, But they tend, and and I was the exact same way in college, especially when it came to uh, issues pertaining and centering around theology and biblical hermeneutics and those kind of things. You get in this mindset that, hey, I'm, I'm at a university. Uh, I know uh, everything. <laughs> I know how to fix. Uh, I know how to fix uh, the ills uh, and certain problems uh, within culture and within community, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, dealing with homelessness or, um, me thinking I know the Bible better than, you know, 
the guy that's been preaching it for the last 20 years uh, if I'm sitting in his congregation, which is very dangerous territory, man. It's very, very dangerous. And so what happens is that the, you know, life seems to, uh, for many of us, I don't know about you, but for me, always kind of seems to come full circle and God's always teaching me something. And so now, uh, I'm getting, uh, basically who I was, uh, in college. <laughs> so <laughs> getting, getting that pushback of, of, you know, why do you do things this way? Why, why is it like this? Why is it like that? Why, why don't they try this? That, try that. Uh, you know, you get kind of, um, so, and, and th- you know, this definitely is not the case, you know, across the board for us, you know, 98, 99% of the students that, that we work with, uh, within our organization and the universities that we work with in our organization are just, man, I couldn't ask for a better group of, group of people, but you are always going to have, you know, that customer or that person who, you know, does rub you the wrong way or they're not fully satisfied or, uh, the way that they want to communicate their frustration is, is not through a very, uh, civil like manner. Uh, and what you have to do is, you know, choose to die to yourself and, uh, choose to serve them, uh, nonetheless, you know, not, not, you know, get run over for the sake of just, you know, woe is me. I'm a Christian. Uh, but, but taking, taking joy in, in laying your life down to serve somebody. Uh, and I think, you know, posi- man, that's so positioning in our hearts and minds to do that for our enemies. If we're able to do those with, you know, just the few, uh, people that we have issues with, imagine the impact we can have with the other 98%. Uh, that we come in contact with, with the other employees that we work with, the other customers that we, you know, absolutely enjoy doing business with, or, you know, the, the things that we're doing at work, those things that we actually enjoy and the things that matter. Uh, if we're actually able to have that mindset of service, even to those who treat us wrong, uh, man, how much of a benefit and an opportunity of influence could that have? Uh, for, for the ninety eight percent of the rest of the time that we have uh, within our vocations, I mean, in that in that sense, it's almost you could view it as an opportunity that you wouldn't have otherwise when you're having to deal with difficult people. Absolutely, absolutely, mm-hmm. man, absolutely. Yeah. We talk about the importance of integrity. Uh, how important is it for us to be uh, to have high integrity at our work? I mean, could you give me, if you're willing to share one example of where you've been tested yeah. at some point in the workplace? Absolutely. Integrity is, is super important, man. Integrity is, is, is simply really all that matters. You know, any, you can lose your job, you can lose your uh, career, you can lose your salary, you can lose your house. Uh, but uh, one thing um, that remains with you forever that, that you can't, you know, well, I guess you could get it back, but but simply defines who you are is your character and your integrity. Uh, actually, recently I've been dealing dealing with this specific issue and, and kind of specifically with gospel driven entrepreneur. So so part of uh, our financial structure, uh, what we have as a financial stream is uh, podcast uh, sponsorships. Uh, so basically, you know, in your kind of typical traditional, if you're listening to a radio, you know, radio ad spot you hear on talk radio or, you know, driving to work on a, you know, Tuesday morning or, or, or whatever you hear, you know, local businesses or events, those kind of things promote, uh, on the radio. So we do the same thing for, for podcast. Um, but, but what I've found and what is very interesting, especially trying to sell, uh, marketing opportunities. You're trying to market marketing opportunities for businesses. So you're selling marketing opportunities. Uh, man, it is, it is very easy to be, um, uh, not so transparent and overcharge, skew numbers, uh, do that kind of stuff. And so I, I think that is always going to be a tension with me, uh, which I think, you know, is, 
um, you know, definitely, definitely a good thing. Uh, because my tendency is I want to tell somebody, you know, I, I want to be as you know clear cut as possible to where I spend more time trying to tell somebody uh, why they shouldn't sponsor us because of all the things that can go wrong versus why they should sponsor us. And so that that's not going to get me anywhere. So so, you know, I think it's this constant tension, man. I think, um, you know, living a life of integrity uh you know, it's integrity just in itself is just a powerful word. It's a big word. It, it's not something that, you know, even even the weightiness of the word, it doesn't seem like it would be something that just comes easily or naturally. And so I think it sits on us as a uh, as a weight, but not a weight that suppresses us and holds us down, but but more of a weight that um, uh I don't know the illustration. It's it's very uh, a, a weight that keeps us solid and, and ground us, keeps us humble, uh, keeps us righteous. Uh, and and man, if you have that, uh, that's that's the only thing that matters uh, in this life. Well, I agree. And thanks for sharing. And I think that word you use, tension, is a, is a really a really good one. And I think that it's important that we always have that tension because we're always going to be challenged in this area in, in our, in our culture, yeah. no matter what we're doing. And so, you know, the day when we're not sensitive to that, uh, we're not feeling that tension is the day we're probably, you know, going down the wrong path. Amen. So I, I think that's, I think that's great. Amen. Uh, all right. My next question is an optional one. <laughs> <laughs> optional question. <laughs> But I think sometimes Christian men, including myself, can be too serious, including at our workplace. Can you share one of your favorite jokes, if you have one, <laughs> that our listeners could share with their coworkers this week? God, God, I love that question, dude. Um, let's see. Uh, a ton of jokes. Uh, appropriate ones or inappropriate ones? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> man, what are some – look, I have these – these college students that come on these opportunities and trips and events with us, uh, typically they like to stay up late. And when they do, they get kind of slap happy, tired, and they begin telling all their funny, uh, funny jokes. So, uh, I'll just do a corny one, um, that I probably learned like in the third grade or something like that. And so, <laughs> so what do you get when you cross a pig with a ninja? You get you get a pork chop. <laughs> so that's it, man. That's that's the best I got for you. Hey, that's a good one, and that's a good one for work as well as for your <laughs> for for those for those of us who have uh, kids. Exactly. So <laughs> make sure that the kids listen to this episode. Uh, it is uh, kid sensitive and kid friendly. <laughs> All right. My next question is: What is your favorite scripture? You might even call it your life verse and tell us why it's your favorite. Man, man, my, I can tell you my my favorite kind of chunk of scripture, uh, and that's Colossians chapter one, uh, verses fifteen uh, through about eighteen through twenty. Um, it says, "He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For all things were created through Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and in Him all things hold." Together, And so I've never, uh, in all my reading of Scripture, have never come through a clear-cut depiction of, uh, a, a, of a piece of Scripture that sets Jesus right where he belongs and explains to the reader exactly who Jesus is, is that, that everything was made through him and for him. He, he is before all things, and not only does he sit as Lord and King, uh, he holds all of it together. He holds us together. He holds the universe together. He holds the world together. He holds my sinful and broken and selfish, stupid heart uh, together with gentleness and power and authority. And he is working all things to reconcile all things back to himself. And that is my favorite, favorite chunk of scripture in the entire Bible. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, you know, I've heard it said that, you know, while Jesus was hanging in the cross being crucified by humanity, he was literally holding the world together mm. 
from that perch and that and and that is so powerful amen. so amen thank you for sharing that all right a lot of us are looking for better ways to leverage our commute to and from work can you recommend one or two things that our men can listen to during their commute to help them to be spirit led once they get to work, maybe an audio book, a podcast, an app, or maybe some Christian music. Absolutely, man. Uh, I, I think this is this is great in whatever area, realm uh, of vocation that you may be in. Whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an employee, um, whether you're a, a, a CEO, a janitor, you're selling paper to people, you're a teacher, what, whatever it is, uh, there is an audio book. Uh, actually, I'm going to pull it up here right now. Make sure make sure it is on audiobook. Um, but Tim Keller uh, wrote a book a couple of years back called Every Good Endeavor, um, and it is an amazing, amazing resource uh, for Christians in in the workforce, no matter um, what realm of vocation that you may be. And so, yeah, I see it right here on iTunes, the audio book, uh, super cheap, $10 and 95 cents, uh, plug it in, listen to it on the way to work, uh, every morning. And, and pastor, pastor Tim just gives a great, uh, biblical, uh, overview of why work matters and how we can leverage, uh, our work to reflect God's glory, uh, within our community and culture. That's awesome. I have not heard of that. Before, yeah, so I'm def- great. I'm I'm definitely going to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. All right, PJ. Uh, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners? Man, uh, the biggest thing I kind of always it, it's it's our mantra at, at Gospel Driven Entrepreneur, and it is to remember uh, to stay driven. You know, uh, in our society, in our culture. Uh, that has one meaning, uh, being driven uh, for uh, the normal person is about the hustle, is about attaining, is about amassing, is about a notoriety. Uh, but being driven uh, as a Christ follower is about being dependent uh, on the Spirit of God, uh, while simultaneously uh, leveraging the place that he has specifically put you in and the skills that, and the passions that he has specifically given you uh, to reflect his glory uh, within culture and community. So stay driven, uh, but, but stay driven by the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. You know, I've, I, I've all that time is being driven sometimes has a negative connotation. Yeah. And I've, 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 I like the way that you describe that. That's awesome. Mm, thanks, man. Yeah. All right. If anyone wants to learn more about you and what you do or just reach out to you for a conversation, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of best two ways is uh, through Twitter. You can find me on Twitter uh, at PJ Simmons. Uh, Just shoot a mention over to me. Uh, Typically, if you want to connect, that's a great way to connect just via Twitter. Uh, If you want to check out our website, gospeldrivenentrepreneur.com. Uh, my contact info is on that. Uh, you can actually just push the contact button and email comes right to my inbox. And so you can shoot me an email uh, with anything that, that you may have going on. Great. PJ, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know that our listeners are going uh, or got a lot out of this. And uh, I just I just really appreciate you you taking the time and Wish the best uh, with your podcast and everything that God's doing doing through you. Hey, man, I really appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Minute Work, I hope you've enjoyed this interview as much as I have. We just heard about P.J. Simmons' journey being spirit-led at his work. Each of our journeys are unique, but hopefully you've heard something in this episode to inspire you and give direction for your own personal daily work life. You can find links and other information from this show at spiritledmen.com slash 012. Until next time, have a great day and God bless.